So with that heart-wrenching display of love and affection out of the way, let's move on to what I absolutely hate about this bike! The first thing that I have to say that I hate about this bike was the original cluster cover. It sucked. It was orange slash yellow depending on the day. It was just ugly. I don't know what Honda was thinking. It was a horrible decision and I'm really glad we changed it. Click on the card to see that video. Number two, limited technology. Sometimes this isn't bad. Sometimes it's not. I really like the fact that this bike does not have ABS. You don't need ABS to be a good rider. I've got such a, a such a fine-tuned feeling of how braking on a motorcycle should be. I don't need ABS anymore. I, I would never need ABS on a bike to be able to stop it. On track, maybe. I mean, maybe it's better. Maybe, maybe you need that on track. I wouldn't know. I've never been to a track day. I'm planning on going to a track day at some point in my life with this bike and when I do maybe I'll have a better understanding maybe someone will let me ride their bike that has ABS but as far as I'm concerned anti-lock braking is just a crutch for people that don't know how to brake and that's my opinion as of the making of this video that may change in the future now there are some things that I wish the bike did have as far as technology was concerned, like a factory gear indicator. I didn't say in the previous 10 things that I love about the bike that I love the gear indicator, because like with the Sergeant seat, that is something I had to add to make the bike better. It did not come with that. So that is something I wish it would have come with. Another thing, it's not necessarily a big deal, but something that would be extremely convenient is a fuel gauge. It would have been super duper nice to have a gauge or the digital bars or whatever to just kind of let me know, hey, you're, you may need to get fuel. It would give you a better idea of when you need to get fuel for your bike, especially going on long road trips. The little fuel indication light that pops up is fantastic, I guess, but when that light comes on, I might have 20, maybe 25 miles to find a gas station or I'm boned. This thing doesn't have a reserve like the 900 did. I could literally run the 900 until it was literally out of gas. I could flip a switch to reserve and I had, you know, that, that was it. Like, I mean, I would never have been left stranded as long as I had the reserve knob turned to the right, you know, area. That's one thing about the bike that I wish was different. And uh, a few other things as far as technology is concerned, but as a basis, those are the kind of things I'm talking about. And they all kind of pertain to the cluster, but you know, there's a few other things like the kill switch. The kill switch on CBRs are known for being bad. Luckily, I've been able to keep this thing alive, but I've had to like take it apart, grease it up, clean up the connections, that sort of thing. But if you don't take care of it, it can leave you stranded, which kind of sucks. And that has happened to a couple of my friends that have CBRs. Quick tip, if you who do have that problem and you do get stranded, best thing you can do is flip the on off switch on the kill switch back and forth a shit ton of times and just really mash it into the start position. That'll kind of scratch up the contacts to give you a good enough connection for it to keep going. So with the whole technology thing out of the way, well, let's move on to the next point. The exhaust location. I'm doing a two for one here. There's two things about the exhaust that, that really just sucks about this bike. Number one, it yellows out the tail lights. Makes the tail lights look like crap after a few months. It sucks, there's nothing you can really do about it. You might be able to put like a ceramic coat or maybe one of those little plastic stick-on covers to kind of keep it cleaned up or maybe just clean it more regularly than I do. But it really sucks that I buy a brand new clear tail light and then a few months later, it's all yellowed and nasty looking and that really, really sucks. The second thing about it is that when I've got a passenger on here, you know, the wife, uh, and I'm like really, you know, going balls to the wall with this thing, like if I'm like racing somebody or just going fast, having a good time, it literally burns her to life. It cooks her up like a dadgum Thanksgiving turkey. It just, it just bakes her to death. Even when she has the backpack on, it heats her up. And that's, that's one thing about undertail exhaust that I hate. And uh, that's probably why the biggest reason why most bikes don't have undertail exhausts anymore these days. The next thing I don't like, I think we're on number four or five here, is uh, it needs a new clutch. Uh, that's kind of my fault. That's, that's one thing about, I mean, it's just kind of a, I'm reaching at this point. I'm going for the low hanging fruit. 
it really needs a new clutch and uh, that's something that we're going to be doing in the future i hope another thing is that these bikes are notorious for cam chain tensioner issues i mean that's something that we have remedied uh but yeah it's just something that i didn't like that i had to deal with i mean i feel like it should be it should have been to the point in technology where it could have been avoided you know what i mean honda this is a really big thing this is like number six or seven there is no easy way to lock your helmet to the back seat of this bike on the 900 no problem you stick the helmet the d-ring of the helmet in the back you close the seat that was it this thing uh they come they used to come or they still come with these uh sheathed metal wires that you loop into the back of the seat somehow and then you loop it through the d-ring but if someone has a dead gum decent pair of kitchen scissors they're getting it off like that's i mean i, I wouldn't trust that thing like i want the d-ring to be completely concealed in the back and that's just not something that you can do with this bike in particular maybe uh maybe i just don't have the right helmet maybe my d-ring strap is just kind of short for a helmet i don't know but it's not easy it can be done but it's not easy and it really sucks so i end up taking my helmet inside a lot of places anyway because i've got the 30k and the gopro attached to it usually um if the helmet gets lost it's so old at this point if the helmet gets lost that's no big deal or if it gets stolen whatever i mean you know but if you if i was if i was at nick's house or whatever up there you know four hours five hours away from home and someone stole my helmet i would have had to buy a new one and that's a you know three four five hundred dollar investment and that's not something that i would have wanted to had to deal with plus if you steal someone's helmet you're just you're just a scumbag you're the scum of the earth one of the last things i want to say is is that there's i, I just desire more power now some of you are going to be thinking oh my god this guy's on a 1000 cc motorcycle and he desires more power i mean yeah like i mean if you look at new motorcycles uh like you know the zx10 r's or the zx10 double r's or the s1000 double r bmws or even the uh new fireblades the r1s any of them they're making 190 to 200 plus horsepower this thing's making 150 on a good day there's nothing wrong with me wanting equal or maybe more horsepower out of this bike especially since i'm a much bigger guy than your average joe most of the guys i see that ride these things are you know 150 to maybe 250 pounds uh, like i said i'm a whopping 300 pounds i'm just a big that's just how it is for me so it's not crazy that i want a little bit more horsepower out of my bike that's not stupid okay the ninth thing that i don't love about this bike that i hate about this bike and this may just be me but after a long ride my throttle hand gets numb in fact you know i've probably been riding for about an hour now it's starting to get numb now granted i have not ridden this bike since last year i know you're gonna crucify me but i just i have not been able to ride i've been busy okay you know i'm a dad now you know my little girl's about to turn one been busy a lot of you get it some of you don't that's just how it is you know and uh i wouldn't give up my baby girl for nothing especially this bike it's just been put on the back burner but i will say this it hasn't been on a battery tender in months this sucker started on the first crank baby Woo! yeah throttle hand gets numb <laughs> after a while probably just me if i was on an upright bike I i've ridden upright bikes for a long time it doesn't happen so maybe it's just the position um but you know uh the riding position i think is fine so i mean i don't know if, i don't know if it's just me but it happens I, and it might be due to vibration or something i don't know comment in the comment section if it happens to you too i'd like to know the last thing about this bike that i hate that i loathe that i have a visceral reaction to it's also something that i love and it's kind of like a catch-22 it's the very last thing i wanted to talk about and this kind of goes hand in hand with the journey with the very last thing that i talked about with the, of the things that i love about this bike the number 10 thing that i hate about the bike is that I, there's not much more i can do you know you know what i mean like there's there's not much more that i can do to this bike a couple things i can throw out there i want to replace all the fairings on it one day with carbon fiber fairings i don't want to go oem honda i've got oem honda these are good i'm happy with these i want to replace every single plastic port on this bike with carbon fiber lighten it up free up some of the horsepower now i know the difference between plastic fairings and carbon fiber fairings as far as weight is concerned is going to be minimal if not any but 
the thought of it, you know, the bike would look super duper cool and it may be one of the only ones of its kind. An 06 CBR 1000 RR where that's all carbon fiber, that sounds cool to me. That sounds really neat. It makes for a good video too. But those fairings cost a lot of money. You know, not 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 a crazy amount to where I, I'm like not even considering it. Like if it costs ten thousand dollars to do it, no way, not happening ever. I could just buy a new bike. But if I can do it for about a thousand bucks, maybe fifteen hundred bucks, buy a part here and there, which is possible, then yeah, why not? Another thing that I'm definitely going to end up doing in the future, and I probably I don't even know why I haven't done it at this point, is a is a speedo healer. I've got the gear indicator. It's time to get the speedo healer. That's not crazy. That's something simple that can be done. Got to calibrate it after the fact. Make a video about it. That sort of thing. But I mean, you know, and a Power Commander Five, maybe. You know, get rid of junk the old Power Commander Three and update my old Power Commander Three tuning video that you know has a ton of views. One of the most viewed videos on my channel at this point. And and just do the whole, that whole video again, but do it in the new house with the new garage with the new Power Commander Five. Maybe that'd be something worth looking at. Then we could do a quick shifter. But as far as anything else is concerned, you know, besides like pulling out the motor and, and like, you know, really, really just giving it the beans, like turbocharging it or putting better pistons in it, a, a better cam, a higher compression ratios, that thing, things like that. I don't want to do any of that. I really don't. I mean, I do desire more power out of the bike, but that's uh, getting into the realm of that kind of stuff. It's not something I want to do. This bike is all original for the most part, as far as the mechanics of it are, is concerned. You know, the forks, the, the wheels, the engine, all that, that's all original. I want to keep it. Maybe one day we'll go nuts. Maybe after the K24 is done, but right now I just want to be, leave it the way it is. I'm happy with it. I really am truly happy with the bike. But besides the fairings, Power Commander 5, Quick Shifter, Speedo Healer, there's not much more I can do. I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, aftermarket wheels, ah, uh, yeah, that would probably be the best bang for buck weight reduction upgrade I could do. But again, aftermarket wheels for this bike are like four grand. I'm not dumping that much money into a $3,000 motorcycle that I bought. It's not happening. Maybe one day, maybe when I'm old as shit and have a ton of money that I just want to blow. With that being said, you guys, that's it. Top 10 things I love and top 10 things I hate. There you go. All in all, I love this bike. I've always loved this bike since day one, even when it had its problems. It's been great to me. It's never left me stranded, and I love it so, so much. If you want to take this video as kind of like a review of my 2006 1000 RR, I, I couldn't recommend it enough. Go get one. If you want one, if this is your dream bike, go get one, because it sure as hell was my dream bike, and I'm so glad I was able to get my hands on one. Thank you all so very much for watching. Remember to like my video, subscribe if you haven't already, please. Please share my videos with your friends, your family, and your dog. Legitimately tip your waitresses. And have a great rest of the day, you guys. I will see you in the next video.